Hi everyone and welcome to our podcast, Returning to Hashem. I'm your host, Sunny Gigi, and today our special guest is Josh. Josh is an accountant from Great Neck, New York. He was raised in a traditional Persian household, attended public school, and even though he wasn't raised fully religious, Josh still had a certain level of respect for the Torah and the mitzvot. We're going to hear some very interesting stories today from Josh, so without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so today we have Josh with us. Josh is uh, 34 years old. He's from uh, Great Neck, New York. He's in accounting business. He grew up in a traditional Jewish Persian home. Discovered Rabbi Reuven about four years ago, and he's been following ever since. So, Josh, thank you very much. We appreciate you uh, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's, it's a real honor. Uh, Josh, if you don't mind, uh, let's start off. Tell us a little more about yourself. What, what your growing up life was like, and you know what what life was like previous to doing chuba and those those kind of details. I grew up in uh, a town called Roslyn. There's a good amount of Jewish people in the in the town. Um, not as much as Great Neck or the Five Towns, obviously, but we had a, a bunch of families in, in Roslyn. Uh, I basically grew up in a tra- traditional Sephardi family. Friday night dinners every night. We say kiddush. I went to shul, you know, pretty often. I wouldn't say every Shabbat, but maybe once a month or something like that. And with my dad, especially after when I turned bar, before my bar mitzvah, I didn't go so much. Uh, but after <clears throat> when I was like 11 or 12, I started going uh, more more frequently. But I was never, we were never Shomer Shabbat, like I said, just the traditional um, traditional uh, meals on Shabbat. And we would go uh, to shul on Saturday mornings. But, you know, I would like drive like the TV and stuff like that. But interestingly enough, uh, even though I wasn't Shomer Shabbat and we were just traditional, I never worked. On Shabbat, deep down inside, I, I even though I wasn't Shomer and I wasn't 100 percent religious yet, I knew that the money that's made on Shabbat is doesn't have blessing. Even from that, from back then, I knew it. My uh, my parents were, didn't work on Shabbat either, because we we grew up in in a, in a in a sense that money that's made on Shabbat we knew just doesn't have blessing. It, that money is not going to go to anything good. Uh, you know, it's going to go going to go down the drain. You're, no matter how hard you work uh, work with it on, on Shabbat, it's going to go into the garbage. So we had that foundation um, built in, uh, instilled in us. But again, we still the, the whole driving thing. We would go to I would go to like my family's for Friday nights and uh, Saturdays. Obviously, we would drive. But so most of my life, uh, I was uh, I, I was doing the, the traditional aspect of it. Um, I got married at uh, 27 years old and. Um, um, I was still I was still in the traditional phase of it, and then uh, I had my first child. I had a daughter. I, w- I was so blessed. And then when it was uh, we wanted to have our second child. Now that I had a daughter, I really wanted a son. Like I really wanted a son to pass this down, my heritage down, Judaism, so I could teach my son. That's when I started watching lectures. I, I'm not exactly sure how it started, but I remember I started watching Rabbi Mizrahi's lectures. I don't know how it, what lectures I started, but I started watching Rabbi Mizrahi's lectures, and you know I started getting more into 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 the t- actual Torah study aspect of it. Because prior to that, I didn't really have. I mean, I went to, I went to public school. I didn't really have a solid Torah education. I mean, from day one when I was bar mitzvah, I did put on tefillin every day. Like certain things from day one, I did, but I didn't really have a Torah back ground where I could say, you know, I knew this halacha, I knew I, I knew any of the chumash, really, I didn't. I started watching Rabbi Mizrahi's lectures. One thing led to the other, and, and I started watching my Ruben's Bita uh, Kolon Hashem. I believe that was my, those that, that series was the first series I uh, started watching. It really, it really touched me because that series really touched me in the sense that it opened my, it opened my head in the sense that I realized that there's someone else controlling this world. No matter how much, whatever, no matter what I do and no matter what we do, someone else, some another being is controlling this world. And the more, you know, people, people don't want to believe it, it's hundred percent fact. It's the more, the more you become religious, the more. And another thing is, is that when I, like in the kosher aspect of it, I would eat like, before I did chuva, I would eat like, uh, I would never eat non-kosher meat. That was, meat was never like yeah, typical traditional families where they wouldn't eat meat, but I would eat like, you know, pizza and, you know, salads and stuff like that outside. Until I stopped, I didn't, um, I, I wouldn't, I didn't grasp all the information. 
it's when I st- completely went kosher that all all the all the lectures I was I was listening to all the uh, any, any lecture all, or any of the books I was reading that actually was getting imprinted into my into my head. It's it's. I what? remember Rabbi Rubin. Go ahead. Well, what made you want to stop after I had my first daughter? I want, really wanted a son. I remember Rabbi, Rabbi Reuven, one of his lectures says, I, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed really hard. But I remember Rabbi Reuven, in one of his lectures, he said, God wants action. Pray, praying is good, but action really, truly um, shows God that you really want something. If you really want something in life, you have to prove it to God. And believe whoever's listening, whoever, whoever listens to this podcast, believe me that if you do if you do something for God and with true heart, He will repay you back thousandfold. And happy, I I could tell you stories back story after story. So I started like praying. I started I started little by little, uh, you know, keeping 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 Shabbat like not completely, but like little by little until until I fully kept the whole Shabbat and I kept kosher. Really, the reason why I did it is because I really wanted a son for my my second child. I started I started keeping I started keeping Shabbat. Started keeping kosher, and then it was it was a blessing. And my second child had a son, and I sat down one day and I said to myself, "I prayed for this, I did all this, and now God gave me what I want, what I wanted. What am I am I going to go back on my word? It's, you know, it, it, it was it's from Shemaim. You These 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 um action these these things that happen has to be from above. Even another story that um. I was becoming Shomer Shabbat, but my wife was was in hundred percent Shomer Shabbat yet. Uh, we basically came from the same background. My wife is Ashkenaz. She's uh, she grew up in um, South Shore of Long Island. Uh, she yeah she she grew up in an Ashkenazi home, and um, she she was uh, she also more of the traditional background. Still wasn't was it uh, wasn't wasn't hundred percent there. So my, my so my wife is basically a uh, she's a nurse practitioner. She works in a hospital, and during COVID, COVID, um, her department shut down because she, she she does pre-surgical testing. So her her so her department shut down, which left her basically without without a job. She had two options: she could either go like uh, use her vacation time until they reopen the the department again. They were going to reopen the department. They just needed to shut it down because no one was doing surgeries during COVID. So um, her boss gave her two options. She said either you can go into the ER to help all these COVID patients, or uh, you can go look at lab results. In, in like an in like an off campus, just re- review lab results of people behind the desk, away from patients, away from COVID. She hadn't give her the, uh, she, the her her boss hadn't really given her the OKs yet and stuff like that. So this was like a Wednesday or Thursday. Her boss said, "I'll let you know." That Friday, I told my wife, "This Shabbat, turn off your phone. Don't just let's keep this Shabbat. Let's see what happens. Just turn off your phone." She turned off her phone. We got we, we had like the the hot play. We had every we had the, everything going, and she turned off the phone. She turned off her phone, and after Shabbat, she she gets a voice. She she turns on her phone after Shabbat, and she gets a voicemail that her boss called her, and she called her and told her that oh the the both of these positions are available if you want to call her. So she called her, and she said oh. I gave the lab. I gave the lab position to somebody else because you didn't answer the phone uh, today. So I give lab position out. So the only available position is to go work in the ER. And my wife was upset. She was because you know she would rather go work in, behind the desk away from all the sick people rather than going work with the sick right. people. She was so upset. She was she was like, oh, I called my phone. I told my wife. I said, Hill, there is no way I can I can bet anything. I can I can anything I own anything. If I could bet anything, there is no way on this planet earth that you kept Shabbat and God's going to punish you for it. There is no way. Impossible. I had every inclination that th- there is no way that God was going to punish her. So she she was upset and stuff like that. So I said, I told my wife, I said, don't worry. There is a reason why this happened. She called her back, her boss back and said, okay, fine. I'll take the other position. I'll take the uh, ER position. She was doing this for about seven or eight weeks, and then COVID started to, you know, be sort of under control, sort of. And after about seven or eight weeks, her department opened up again, so she was going to go back to her old job, S- same same hospital, but back to her old position. And oh, so a while in, in those seven eight weeks, so she was working there, like the uh, because she came, she was helping out a lot, and you know, she was she frequently helped out. She got well known in in the ER, the managers, the the higher ups, the the doctors. The, the 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 head head people in the ER in the hospital start to know her and start to 
see her face like a lot. Right before she was about to go back to her uh, to her regular job, the manager in the ER t- told tells her, hey, "Hey, listen, if uh, if we're you know for short staff, you know some days can we call you? Like for example, on a Sunday when you're not working in the other slot, can you uh, the weekend?" But she said, "You know, I don't work Saturdays. I can if you need me on a Sunday, I can come. I can come work." She said, "Fine." So she went back to to her other to her other position. A week later, the manager calls her from the ER, says, we're short staffed this Sunday. We haven't called anyone yet. You're the first one we're calling. We're offering double pay, double pay to come work that Sunday. And my wife's like, sure, why not? She went that day. She got double pay. They called her again the following week. Again, they said, we have an incentive for double pay to come in on Sunday. She did this for three months, meaning that not the, not only did God reward, God rewarded her like tenfold. The other department, the the lab the lab report department shut down after seven or eight weeks. And she, if, she, if she took the other job, they would have never known her in the ER. They would have never known who she is. Because she took that job, God repaid her back with, with multiple shifts with double pay for like two, three months. She was working like Sundays and collecting double pay. And I go to my wife. I say, see, there is no way in this pla- on this planet, on this earth, that you do what God wants and he'll penalize you. It was really like a shocking story. That was like my the first like story of my wild day. Um, I have, another, I have like another, after that, you look, I started donating, uh, you know, every month to Rabbi Reuven and, and really you see, you see blessing, um, uh, in your money, uh, you, you see your blessing in your money. And I, as I, you know, I have another story, I'm going to count. So I was doing like my own, I was doing my own taxes and it was like, you know, actually two years ago. I th- and when I was filing my taxes, I had, I had an amount due at the end. I wasn't going to refund. I had some, I had to pay money at the end. So I set it up to the money. It was like a few thousand dollars. So I set the money to be withdrawn on like a Monday, let's say. It was a Monday. I had to go move money to put it in my bank account so the money could be withdrawn. So this was like maybe a Tuesday. I am kid you not. The fri- Three days later, which is the Friday before the money was going to be withdrawn. Okay. I, I, no, I go I go into the app or the, the Chase app. See, my my bank account, the, the, the money went up by a few thousand dollars. And I didn't transfer any money. And I see my, my boss. My boss like... Like Zell me, my, I'm on payroll, so like I don't just get like money like Zell to me. It's just I want like I get paychecks. Like literally two days before the bill is due, uh, and, and not only was it the amount ma- the amount I needed, it was more than that. I go to my boss. I said, well, "What is this for?" He says, "Just because you were, you've been doing a good job." We decide. We decide to give you uh, an extra boost. Literally, God sent me the money three days before I had to. I had to pay my taxes. I was just like, wow, wow. Uh, unbelievable unbelievable so actually you see like stories after stories and this is for like for my wife it it was a little bit easier for me to become religious i feel like for my wife it w- it made it easier when she when when she saw these these blessings coming to fruition when someone tells you a story of how like what's the the, the things that happened to them you can believe it when it happens to you with your t- own two eyes it feels it for you it like you can't when when something happens you can say okay the first time it happened it's coincidence second time but after it happened multiple times you can't you say like st- you, you know someone else is in control like the, the probability of these things happening are there's no there's no it's slim like almost zero you just you know there's a divine presence you know someone has is controlling from up, up, up there you, you said you started keeping shabbat well, how did you start keeping shabbat um when i started watching rabbi reuven this is this is one another reason why rabbi reuven is amazing and he truly wants his uh, students to thrive uh, i start i started like watching rabbi reuven's videos and like i needed guidance because i don't there are so many books there's so many um rabbis and halachot and you don't know you don't know who i don't want to say trust but like what halachot to keep some of them ashkenazi some of them Sephardi, some of them you know this rabbi says some posek say yes yeah, so I, I had needed guidance after maybe a few months of watching Rabbi Reuven, I, I started asking questions about Shabbat and stuff like that, how to keep it and this and that. He said, uh, so I asked him, I said, you know, how, how could I go about, you know, studying for it? He says, he says, are you Ashwin? I said, I said, Sephardi. He says, go and buy Yalku Yosef, the Shabbat edition. I went and bought it. Maybe like a week week later, he texts, Rabbi Reuven texts me and he says, do you want a Chavruta to help you? Do you want to help you so you can go over, so you can, you know, properly go over some of 
guide you. And he got me in touch with someone, amazing, amazing person, amazing guy. Every, once a week, every week, literally, I would study, I would study it like with yourself before. I would talk to him, I'd go over it, uh, I would like read it, and then I would jot down notes. And then once a week, I would go over it with the Chavruta. And I was doing this for maybe a year, year and a half with him, and it was amazing. And this just goes to show you that like, I Ruben really, wa- really wants to help people. And he's not like the typical rabbi where he wants to he he generally wants to make people better pe- better human beings better people as a person that's why i love his musar lectures it, it really there's there's tons of lectures on youtube where you can go find any topic you want but there's not so many so many rabbis that actually teach people to be better people as a person yes obviously rabbi Rui wants the the halachot part and all the following the rules also the what would grab me to rabbi Ruven was that the musar teachings the, he wants to guide people in, in life so that so, so that you could do the right thing so you could be the, the, a good person in in life because unfortunately we live in a, a world where there's not not so many he wants that's what i that's what i love about about his uh his musar teaching and uh, you know so another story where one of the, one of my favorite lectures is stump the rat because that also goes shows you that how why, why rabbi ruben cares is because he wants to answer people's questions it's not like okay i have a lecture i want to talk i want to talk listen and that's the end of the story he wants to teach people based on what they want they want to learn they are they the topics they want to learn the questions they have that just just shows you how much he cares for the people stump the rabbi was it was is a great is a is a, is, is a great great lecture and there was one there was one time Time, I asked one of the questions on the Facebook, but he was still doing the lecture of the Parsha, so he hadn't got to the questions yet. He got to my question. He started reading the question, and then for some reason, it, it vanished because I guess people were asking questions. When it gets to the bottom, it just disappears. He couldn't answer my question. So any other rabbi, you're like, all right, fine, whatever. He would go to that, and he would forget about it. So the the Sumter rabbi lecture was over. Next next morning, I log into Facebook and I see he searched for my question and he answered. And I was like, wow, anyone else going to say, okay, fine. It vanished. And okay. Uh, but he went through the questions to find my question to answer it. It was, it was, I, I believe I, cause I wanted to start reading the Gemara. I, I asked him, which one I should I start with? He told me to start with Brachot. He answered the question. And I was like, wow, this guy, this rabbi is truly amazing. From time to time, I would ask him my WhatsApp questions and like that. Within a day or two, always answered. Um, at one point, uh, this was another an, another uh, um, another little story because when I was started to become religious, uh, where I was living, I was living in Port Washington, and there was. It was very hard because there was barely any Jews, and any Jews they weren't religious. There was no air roof, so during the summer Shabbat, like my my kids and my wife, literally uh, we have to be home all day, and it was hard. It was it was very challenging. Where we wanted to move to Great Neck, which were, was all the religious people, and I really we truly wanted to move to Great Neck, but it wasn't feasible. It, like monetarily wise, it was just it wasn't feasible. It just we couldn't like it was, every, every house was just great. I was wasn't in our budget, and it was just crazy and it was really hard because we didn't know where we wanted to, we, we we didn't know where we wanted to move i started praying and mm-hmm. remember where the woman says with suffering and comes blessing there is there is reward that comes with it it was really it was really getting tough for my family like a few months later covid hit once covid hit interest rates plummeted house 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 prices and everyone panicked no one wanted to buy houses mm-hmm. no one no one no one no one knew what was going on and that's when i took and that god i literally Sent me my my blessing right then and there. The interest rates drop. The the it's it's really amazing when you do chuva things. The, the things you think, the things you want to happen, will happen, but not in the way you want it. In in ways that you would never even think of. Like. Totally out of left field. The fact that like COVID hit, no one wanted to buy houses. Again. Literally, the house that I bought was on the market for like a few months, and nobody wanted it because they didn't, no one know what was going on. Literally, interest rates hit like rock bottom. It was free money almost because no one, everyone was it was in shambles, and that's what that's what I, just, I told my wife. This is opening that God gave us. It's not one of so thank God 
and we moved to our, our uh, gay next or religious neighborhood and we love it here it's, it's amazing it's just fascinating when you do chuva the, the miracles that happen it's it's one thing to hear it from people and then it's one thing to actual experience experience it with yourself let's backtrack for a second um your parents what were your parents also following you or were they how did your parents take your uh change were they with it against it supported it? my pa- so so my parents uh like i said were always were, were traditional they were never ag- they were never against the way they look at it is either which is better rather than go the other way of becoming totally religious or god for chastish on intermarrying or becoming religious obviously you know even a traditional family would you know would say obviously going the other way is hundred a hundred a thousand times better they didn't say no they didn't say yes they let me do what i want because at that point also i was i had a, I had a wife i had two kids i i was out of the house also so they didn't really they said you you do what you know do what do what makes you happy and this 100 makes me happy. Yeah, it's just fine. It, it, it's really interesting from Rahul Rubin's lectures where he says, when you do chuba, God guides you and he, and, he, and, he tra- and, he, and he guides you to, and he brings people in your life to help do it. And it's 100,000% true. For example, my wife, my wife's sister also married someone who shom Shabbat, which made it a lot easier for me to make my wife, my wife religious because her sister was becoming religious. My sister married someone one Shomer Shabbat, which made, again, life a lot easier. We were all right. on the same page now. It, it came to Great Neck, found the shul, a great shul. You know, he, he, he sent me, God sent one of our friend, one of my friends, he's my Chavruta, uh, Chavruta and I study with him once a week. God just sends you people. When you actually want to do Tshuva, He actually sends you people. He he he, may, yeah. he 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 paves the road, basically. He pay, but again, you have to want it. You have to really put in, if you put the effort, there is no, there is no doubt, there is no doubt that God rewards you more than you can even think in your head. It's, 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 it's really amazing. So okay, hold on. So let's see. You you just dis- you said you discovered Rabbi Reuben from Rabbi Mizrahi's lectures, right? That's the first time you yeah mm-hmm. heard, right? So so you were you were watching Rabbi Mizrahi, right? And then you saw um, recommended videos on the side. You saw Rabbi Reuben. Did do you remember the first one that you watched? You said you didn't remember, right? Or did... What was the beautiful? So... Yeah, so the the first I believe the, the first videos I started to watch were the Abitachom uh, and Again, this was like almost four years ago. So uh, I you know I've been watching Rabbi Rubin's lecture. I probably have watched thousands of hours, like literally thousands of hours. Some people like the short videos. I honestly I think the the, the long lectures are, are, are you, it's like you get the whole yeah. picture when it's a, when it's like the two hour lectures. But it's in my eyes the two hour lectures do more justice than you know a clip but again what to to each their own you know i guess people have to get you know started what i what i love about his lectures is that he has different topics that somehow or another relate to my life and relate to topics that people other rabbis don't talk about it it really makes me think that you know he's really the first one who taught me what bitachone emunah really mean don't be so worried don't be so do what god wants and don't worry everything will be okay and it's 100 percent true the jewish people would understand this it's 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 the blessings that come you you you, you wouldn't understand you, you, you can't comprehend it yeah it, it's amazing so well, would you say that that was the thing that inspired you to kind of change your life i mean having be the horn Hashem versus not having be the horn is like mm-hmm. a world two two different worlds you know you you see life differently oh absolutely rabbi reuven changed the way i think i've learned more torah in the last four years than the last 30 years he he changed the way i think the, the way i think though in, in the sense that what matters in life and who like i said who's in control and what blessings come from doing tshuva the one until it, you see it until you until you see it until you see the miracles in your 
lot. The thing is, is like back then, I'm sure these miracles were happening to me. But until like you become religious and you you stop eating non-kosher and you start doing shuvah, is when you actually see it. It opens up your mind when you do shuvah. Like it, it opens up your mind in the sense that you you realize that wow, what just happened is like statistically really not possible. Like it's not really possible for something like something like this to happen. It's just and it's hard to like you can't disprove it. Right. See, seeing the world through the eyes of uh, someone that has been the heart, Amazing. it's absolutely life changing. And, you know, I recently purchased a lot more you know, books and a lot more really getting into more the fun based uh, learning. And your whole perspective on everything changes like 100%. And uh, sometimes, you know, a lot of people might hear the words of the heart, yeah, have, you know, have faith, you know, rely on Hashem for everything. But once you actually start learning and applying, you, you, it's like you, you're never going. You're never going to go back to, to how you how you were, you know, before you had. Oh, you 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 can't. You can't go back. It's it, it once your mindset changes, going back the other way yeah. doesn't make doesn't make sense. It's just it's just foolish. <laughs> it's just you see the blessing. You see like I like so my son now. Uh, he's going to preschool and uh, I take him to school with me. He like I, I put on the phone every morning and he's and I, I have to take him to school. So like he sits next to me every morning and he puts on a towel. He's three and a half. He puts on a he 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 he, he loves wearing a CC. He he puts on a tally. And I even right. bought him like they have these toy to fill in. I bought him because he wants to he wants to mimic what I'm doing. Yeah. And I just love it. I, 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 it. This this is this is worth to me more than all the money in the world. Then my, that like my uh, my son could Baruch Hashem could like literally sit next to me and you know I mean he doesn't know he can't read he I mean he knows the Aleph Bet but he's three and a half so but like the fact that he like he can he can sing along with me he knows like Shema like the first line of Shema and, like certain things like he'll sit next to me and he'll read he'll read it with me he'll cover his eyes for Shema the fact that like he loves mimicking what I do with the religion best feeling in the world yeah definitely a very uplifting satisfactory feeling like, to see your kids following uh, in the right footsteps. Absolutely. Did you ever personally get in touch with Rabbi Ruben? So, uh, yeah, besides like the questions I had from him, buying my house, I was going back and forth with the like the uh, the agent and it was during the three weeks and it was in three weeks of uh, you know, Shabbat and I texted I texted Rabbi Ruben I said, Rabbi, I, they're pinning me into a corner I, if I don't, if I don't sign this contract, I'm gonna lose the house, and it was a great deal. Like it was a great deal. The mortgage rate was great. everything was like it was in three weeks. I said, Rabbi, I don't want to do it because you know it's not three weeks. I, I was actually in the nine days. I texted him and I said, Rabbi, I told him the situation, and he said, sign it. And and if, if, so he, he, but the funny thing uh-huh. is, I signed it on Rosh Chodesh. He said he said sign it, and uh, I signed it, and I am here now. Uh, three th- almost three years later and i love a blessing that i love it blessing um and again well, uh, that was one instance and then the, the instance where he told me about the chavruta for the to study the alcohol yourself was another um instance um he's just been you know anytime i needed him always he's he's responded to me he's always giving me advice um in the right dra- direction and what I'll, another reason why it's just uh, why Rabbi Rubin is just the best. Is you could tell he wants to tell people the truth. With him, it's no like he wants people to know the truth and nothing but the truth. It, that's it, and not too many people lie. A lot of people they like sugarcoating it. But I like well, Rabbi Rubin is he tells people the truth, and that's, that's what this generation needs. A, a, a rabbi that will tell you yes or no, no like going around beating around the bush type of thing, which is which is what he, who he is. Josh, it seems like so far you have pretty good things to say. I mean, you were uh, you started keeping Shabbat. Well, Hashem, you have a wife, kids. You know, you're not uh, going off the derech or anything like that. Was there any type of hard times or anything that uh, situation or anything that you had to overcome along the way, or everything's kind of just been smooth? So in the beginning, when I started doing tshuva, uh, we were living in that area um, in Washington where there was no nobody around us, and there was no earrobes and stuff like that. That was that was pretty tough. Another thing that was it was uh, it was tough it was tough, but we got over it. Is that for holidays and Shabbat, we used to go to like different family members, and we would drive 
to aunts, uncles, my, my parents. So, but after that happened, we go on your So basically, all the holidays are not all the holidays now. Pretty much in my home. that that was a little bit on the harder on the harder side. But these you know these these hardships. It's not really it's not really hard. It's not really hardships. It's just adjustments you have to make. And these adjustments just. Sh- Proves to God more how much you want, how much you want to learn, how much you want to be a good Jew, how much you want to learn his, his Torah, how much you want to do what he wants. And what you get returned, you can't even imagine. I know that you're studying with uh, Ralph, or you guys are still studying together, right? No, so I have, uh, I, I not no longer studying with Ralph, but I have another Kavruta now that's lo- that I go like, um, I go to I go to shul and I study with him like face to face. So uh, so so yeah. So I have a I have a chuvruta that way. Um, it's a little bit easier. Yeah. If, um, we like one room and stuff like that. You could you know you b- bounce ideas off each other. So, although Ralph was amazing, he was such a such a really great humble guy who helped me literally in the beginning. Uh, he helped me understand all the halachot and all the intricate details because because when i started because when before i became religious i thought you know shabbat was turn off your phone don't drive don't turn on the light and that's it once i started reading the alcohol yourself i see oh wow a lot more than that and he really he really you know explained it to me like he you know yeah. like, like a first grader or a second grader would you know be taught so he he was amazing, and thanks to Rabbi Ruben's recommendation, uh, I learned a lot. Now I'm reading with my Haruta Yaku Yosef the Boker uh, Boker Dos Halachot, which is pretty interesting stuff. You'd be surprised the, uh, how many laws just really get out of bed in the morning. Exactly, and it's the funny thing is, it's like the first the first half half of the book is like. It doesn't even talk about getting up from bed yet. All it's all their stuff that has not not even related to getting up. It's fascinating. The Yaakov Yosef is real. It's a for Sephardis. It's a really, really, really good book for beginners. They really, uh, you know, put it in language that anyone can understand. Really clear cut and concise language. Best. And you know what it is? No one like when you say, "Oh, when I when I, you follow like Rabbi Vadios." Like Holocaust, Rabbi Vadio's books. No one's gonna say, "Oh, yeah, uh, you know, wh- wh- who who told you to do this?" He's the uh, posek, like he's the the glorial door. Like he, no one's gonna question. So the best to go to the source, which because I had like another book I bought from another rabbi that you know some some Holocaust was different. Once I got to Yaku Yosef, I knew this is what happened. Like I mentioned all the time on on here, you know, you never, you're not really keeping Shabbat unless you know the laws of Shabbat. That's very important. Foundation of Jack. And yeah, but uh, believe me, once I, once you keep Shabbat, the blessing comes. It's so true. I, I am one witness. I can tell whoever's who watched the podcast, who's in the middle, thing about Shuba, you know, thing about becoming religious. Guarantee you, I. You can almost guarantee you can guarantee it. you do chuva you you get blessings left and right that you weren't even thinking you you wouldn't think out of left field things come you're like wow it's just it's just it's 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 sad that more people don't do it you know more people uh, are are not as open to it they have this some some so some sort of fear that if they do chuva it's like you know they're they're being held down from from life which is hundred percent false one hundred percent false true happiness doesn't come from materiality and like and you know oh it, it true true this comes from having a connection to God and it, what's interesting is when I go like with like to study like yeah you kind of like after have to get work and studying with him the, the like studying even like basic Yakut yourself which is like like the basic of the basics not Gomorrah or anything of that stuff it like really calms you down Stud, studying Torah really like it, it puts you you puts your mind in a better position uplifts you it, it, you know it's not it's it, it, these these um these uh, bach, bach that they study all day there is definitely a reason why they do it it's just food to your soul right? until someone does it they don't they won't understand what like someone who's telling them what they what they're saying it, it's just right a lot of people also don't want to be obligated to do to do that like you know keeping the bar like you said they, they don't want to miss out you know what? What their friends are doing when they go out and they're they're stuck at home. They don't want to be obligated. You know, they want to be free. But is it true freedom though? 
No. Is it true freedom? It's not true freedom. It's, it's a misconception that it's not freedom. It's not really freedom. It's it, it's all fake free. It's not really true freedom. Freedom is sh- you have Shabbat, you have your family, you get together with fr- you get together with friends, family. You do a little bit of uh, kiddush. You you do a little story. You know you know you go over the parsha. You do storytelling. Uh, you know that that's that's what it's a day of rest. It's it's a brilliant, 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 brilliant concept. It's just people missing out. Okay, so Josh, let me ask you, what kind of goals? you have now what kind of things you have so one of my one of my dreams has always been you know even before i became religious is becoming a chazan one day i always i always wanted to be a chazan like i don't know what it was i just I, back then in the day when like i went to hebrew school and i didn't really when i started reading when i when i started putting to fill in I, I i literally said like shema and my kaddish in the beginning and that was it and i turned I took off my phone after actually when i started doing tshuva in, in like 2019 when i started uh, listening to rabbi Ruven for Shachrit every every month I started adding another um, paragraph in in Shachrit I started adding adding and a few months later I added more added more so now I pretty much read like ninety percent of it now and I'm proficient at it because it's my goal like and now I read I read at night it's just I, I always wanted to be a chazan and I know the only way that could this be possible if I want it and I have to do the work I, I, and praying is really a soothing it's it's soothing to the soul and it's just uh, I love it and you know one day I was also want to you know read my full bar mitzvah parsha again one day. I, I actually for my bar mitzvah I never actually read the full parsha uh, that's another one of my goals to um to actually read my full parsha one day I, I want my children to uh, I pray every day like I want my children to follow I want to I want to teach my children like I, I didn't have a yeshiva education I, I want I want my kids to have the yeshiva education I didn't have like for example everything I, I I've done up until I had to teach I had to like teach myself I had to do myself I want my kids to have that foundation already so they don't have to go through this you know the struggle of you know doing them they have to you know do it themselves I want them to learn from childhood. You know, like engrave it in them from childhood that this is the path. Uh, you know, a, sh- a yeshiva is you know a a, a big uh, a big burden. Uh, you know, monetarily wise. But I've always told my wife, I said, God wants his kids to God wants his kids to learn yeshiva. He'll pay for it, and he has. I have to keep if he pays for it. I have to keep my deal and send my kids there. Yeah, one of the positive things about uh, sending our kids to yeshiva and Jewish schools is that uh, it doesn't come out of our. Uh expenses on the Rosh Hashanah, you know, everything is set on Rosh Hashanah, and that's one of the things that uh, doesn't get taken out. Yeah. Like uh, Shabbat and Yom Tov and other all the mitzvot and money they spend mm-hmm. on mitzvot, sending kids to yeshiva and schools and Jewish schools, it doesn't it doesn't apply to that as well. So that's good. Oh, interesting fact, isn't it? Josh, what kind of advice would you give to other people that are now watching us? My advice to you is tshuva is a journey. At times, it can be hard to adjust, but once you adjust, that 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 hard that time of hardship where you have to adjust from your past life to tshuva can be hard. After you pass that threshold, the blessing that comes it, it is unfathomable. You, it's you can't think you can't think of it. It's just the blessing that comes is is so is so heartwarming. It's so it, it, it brings meaning to life. Things fall into to play without you even knowing things god just sets pieces for you paves the way for you and life just has more meaning it's more meaning than just get up every morning go work uh, you know the, the 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 usual routine it has more meaning has, there's a goal when you wake up every morning there's something you can look forward to every morning it brings family together it, people think you know judaism is a burden but when you actually get into it and you know past that threshold of challenges you see you see what what results come about and and when you like your praying has has more meaning your prayer everything just gets elevated 100 percent, 100 percent. things things you pray for literally come like literally comes to fruition anything like things you want when you actually pray and after you actually show god that you want it your actual god little by little 
No one says to become a sadiq over the, overnight. Little by little, by little just like Rabbi, Rabbi Ruin says, you know, the big the big laws have to be done right away. But Judaism is like a step, like a stepping stone. Like at every at every hurdle, there there is a challenge. But when you overcome it, the blessing that comes with it, it, it it makes you think, oh wow, it was worth it. When I speak to my like cousins and like friends who are like on the same religious level as me now, like that's all I want to talk about. Gamora and like uh, stories and stuff like that. I just all the other stuff people talk about is just like doesn't phase me anymore. Doesn't interest you. Doesn't. It's really it's 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 really it's really interesting how like God sends you people, sends you people who have who have like a commonality with you, a common a common. Uh, once you become religious, he sends uh, someone into your life that ha- is 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 on that religious level with you, and you you could share you share your thoughts together, you you share you know you share Torah together, you you grow together with that person. It, it's really fantastic. Well, I mean, it definitely you know reflects here, you know, the way you you're speaking about it and how you're telling it. You know, I can definitely see that it has uh, you know a lot of influence. Uh, on your life. So, Baruch Hashem, you are able to, to join us today and uh, tell us everything, uh, share your story and your experiences. And it's uh, it's very, very, very cool, very uh, impacting um, story about, um, you know, your wife and the job and, and, and the accounting and, and the, how your boss paid you. It's all very, very inspiring. So, Josh, we really appreciate uh, you you know, being here and taking the time uh, out of your evening to uh, do Kiruv and help us and uh, help other people. And um, is that the same that's going to help a lot of more people return to Hashem? My pleasure. Uh, it was really, when, when, Rabbi, when Rabbi Ruben asked me, I was like, oh, wow. It was really an honor. He thought, uh, he thought maybe, like, I, I could, I could make, I could make a difference in the pod. I you know, my story could make a difference in, in, in the podcast. Out of all, out of all the students, like, you know, it's really, it's really, you know, it really makes you feel, you know, feel, it makes you feel good about yourself. It makes you, it makes you feel good. And I appreciate yeah. Rabbi, Rabbi Ruben and, and you, obviously. Um, oh, yeah. for, for having me and you know, giving me the, the opportunity, you know, to say my story. Hopefully we can meet in person one day. That's a shame. Yeah. That's a shame. All right, Josh, we really appreciate you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. If there's anything you need, reach out. You know, we're here. We're here. We're here to help. And you are a big part of uh, helping us tonight. And you know, Make a big and hopefully what I said it will make a difference. Absolutely, absolutely, without a doubt. It was a nice night, Josh. Okay, no, that was good. Exactly. A very special thank you to all our amazing guests who show real Avati Sled by taking the time out of their busy schedules and sharing their ups and downs with us. All for the sake of Am Yisrael. May Hashem continue to bless you a thousandfold. If you enjoyed this video, you can find more of these podcasts on our website at www.bizatashem.org. If you are on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channel to hear more highly influencing lectures and stories like the one you heard here today. Thank you for watching, and Bezat Hashem, may we all have the merit to return to Hashem.